What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today I was going to discuss a Calamondon orange tree care and just how to kind of take care of it. As I was saying, this is the Calamondon orange tree. It's a dwarf orange. The scientific name is Citrus Mitis. It is a really good tree to have, especially if you are kind of a beginner with citrus trees. You're not too familiar with them and what all they need in order to thrive. One of these trees, especially the dwarf varieties, the Calamondon is a dwarf variety. It is a smaller orange. I believe they are kind of similar to like a tangerine or a kumquat. Produces fruit about an inch in diameter. It is really kind of an acidic fruit and you can kind of use them just like you would a lemon or a lime. They're really kind of almost too acidic and sour to eat, but if you like that, you could eat them. You definitely could, uh, but a lot of people use them similar to what you would use with a lemon or a lime. Now, these trees originated around China. They were brought to the United States around the early 1900s, so we've had them for a little bit. They've always been kind of a tropical evergreen tree. So this guy should not lose his leaves. So in the winter time, if you live anywhere colder than about 9A, you'll need to bring this guy inside. Now they are a little bit more hardier when it comes to the citrus trees. I believe only like the kumquat is a little bit more hardier than this guy. He can tolerate temperatures around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, but not for long. Only like a day or two, maybe three, and you skim by on the seat of your pants with that one. But uh, anything longer than that, you'll want to bring them inside because they will die. Other than that, they are really easy trees to take care of. It's late August here in Kentucky. I've still got him sitting outside in the front yard. He's doing really well. Very easy to take care of. Just like with any citrus tree, they need about 12 hours of sunlight, direct sunlight. Now this guy is a little bit more shade tolerant than other citrus trees, but it will perform its best in direct sunlight. And you'll get more fruit out of them, more flowers, uh, more leaf growth. So you can tell some of its newer growth isn't really what it should be. It is weak, uh, very light green. You can see kind of the darker green, lime colored leaves. That's really about ideal color. So when you're going to choose your pot, we always know a classic green and brown, thanks to Mother Nature. So I know this isn't really 100% brown, but it really looks good with the dark and light color greens and the earthy kind of color of the pot. So that's always a safe bet whenever you're using a Kalamundan tree to know that you know a brown pot would probably look really good with it. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind there. Substrate. You're gonna need something that is specific for citrus trees. They need specific trace elements, iron, magnesium, manganese, I think a little bit of copper or something like that. There's a couple other ones that I'm neglecting to mention right now, but you can't just use regular potting soil because your tree probably won't make it and it definitely won't produce any good smelling flowers or your fruit either. So I did about three quarters of a miracle Grow citrus formula and then I used another the rest of the way with just organic compost and then I put some top dressing, some mulch on top. Ideally, if you can, I would use cypress mulch. A lot of bugs do not like the smell of it or anything about it. So if you put cypress mulch around your plant, that'll help be a more organic way to fight back on the pests and everything because they don't like it at all. So we cover light. It needs at least 12 hours of sunlight. When you move it inside for the winter time, you want to keep that in mind and keep them in a southern facing window. Water, just like any other citrus trees, they come from the tropics. They're evergreen, so they need water. Not just because it's in their environment, but also to produce all these flowers and all this fruit, they need a lot of water to do so. So they do like to dry out a little bit in between. I would allow for the top inch or so of the soil to dry out before you water it again. And using top dressing like this mulch will actually help hold the water in for it too. So keep that in mind. If you don't have any substrate or any top dressing on top, I would water him in the dog days of summer at least once a day. It would not be uncommon to see me watering him twice a day, just depending on how hot it actually is outside. I mean, if your temperatures are over 100 degrees, I would give him water in the morning and water at night also. Like I said, the mulch will really help it out so that I don't have to water him probably every day, just depending on 
how he kind of looks. You can see they will droop a slight little bit, but not really. They aren't really big indicators of whether or not they need a lot of water. But as the heat and humidity and all that goes up, all those levels go up, the water intake for a plant needs to go up too, especially your citrus trees. As I was saying earlier, temperature. They do not like temperatures uh, to get too cold, but they are a little bit hardier. So 9A and hotter, uh, you can leave them outside, but colder areas, you will have to bring them in for the winter time. Ideally, they like temperatures around 55 to 70, 75, something like that. They can tolerate some heat, high heat, but I do have mine to where he is in shade in the hottest part of the day. So they do not like a whole bunch of heat. If you know it's gonna be over 80 degrees, I would try and place this somewhere where uh, it's not gonna be in direct sunlight during the hottest part of the day. Probably will be the last plant that I take in for the summertime because they can take a little bit of cold, especially if you've got mulch around there. That'll help with the graft area. So I would go ahead and add mulch, even if it's in a pot, because that will kind of insulate it, not just with the water, uh, but with the heat also, if it starts getting cold out on you and you haven't brought him in. Mulch will enable him to stay outside a little bit longer than any other plant. Citrus specifically. They do like a little bit of acidity in their soil. So you can use Epsom salt to help with the acidity. I think ideally they want their pH to be around six, maybe 6.5 to seven. So a little bit of acidity does help with this tree, especially when it's producing all of its fruit because you know, citrus trees are notorious for losing magnesium. So Epsom salt will help you there. If you notice that you are having some splotching with your leaves, kind of like the dark green, and you see a little bit of yellow on there, yellow veins, the Epsom salt can help with that. You can take about one to two tablespoons per gallon of water and then just kind of water it around the root area and it'll absorb it that way. That's a good organic way. If you've done that for a while and you can tell that's still not helping, I would get some chelated iron. That's pretty organic also. You can, I think, I wanna say, I'm not sure, you'll have to read the directions, but I think it's about a tablespoon per gallon of water also. And that will help if you've used Epsom salt and you continue to see a lot of splotching with the leaves and it's an organic way too so that's good for you also. If you see a lot of leaves that start to kind of wrinkle up and uh, kind of fold in half, have a little bit of bite marks on there, we may be getting some kind of microscopic hard to detect with the human eye. Uh, worms or caterpillars in there that are eating your leaves up and just kind of destroying your plants. A good way to combat that is some Monterey BT. That will actually help your plant kill anything that's uh, attacking it, any kind of pest. It is organic so it will help with the kind of taste of the fruit a little bit and make sure that nothing really is attacking your plants. And also don't forget, you may not be able to see it, but you may have some bugs down in the bottom going to town on your roots. If that's left unchecked, it could kill your plant also. So Monterey BT can help with that as well. And finally, I wanna talk about more about the organic compost. It is a little bit easier to burn your roots out and your plant out if you use a synthetic fertilizer. So organic compost really is good, not just because it's organic, but it will also help it stay in the pot a little bit longer for your plant. Anything synthetic will actually kind of wash out and won't last as long. Now, don't get me wrong, organic compost can wash out a little bit too, but it won't be as easy as the synthetic stuff will be because that stuff really can just pour through and just flush on out the bottom. And also, make sure your pot that you have it in does have adequate drainage holes in the bottom of it. Citrus trees do like water, but they don't like their feet to be constantly wet all the time. They don't want to be sitting in a soupy kind of concentrated substrate. So make sure your water has some place to go. Don't even leave a saucer underneath there because it's actually not going to be able to get away from the roots. It's just going to hold on to it. So when you go to water it, make sure you water enough that all the excess drains out the bottom and you do not have a saucer because that all just keep that on there and be counterproductive with it. Now the only kind of pest that I've seen with these calamundin trees, aphids of course, and your mulch will kind of help with that. I would actually kind of build it up maybe about an inch, inch and a half, two inches. You don't want it to be kind of all the way up here, but you do want to be around the graft area. But if you do about an inch, inch and a half, it'll be harder for the bugs to kind of get down in there. I'm not saying it will prevent them, but it will be a little bit more of a challenge for them. So they might not get as far down in there, but they do like to burrow down into the soil, especially kind of a wet, substrate because they will go to town on the roots and start eating them as well. Mealybugs can be a problem. Uh, again with that 
you are probably going to want to take a washcloth and douse some isopropyl rubbing alcohol in there and go over any kind of infected areas that you see. The white kind of powdery substance of the mealybug and wash all that off and then spray it off too. Uh, you may have to get some chemicals involved. I would suggest using neem oil at first. That's really good with mealybugs. And then you may have to go uh, into something a little bit stronger too. But make sure you read the directions with that because a lot of that stuff you kind of have to shake up before it'll actually get going. And you do want to test it a little bit to make sure you won't actually kill your plant. Another one I've seen, uh, spider mites are really bad. Fortunately, those are really easy to take care of. All you need to do for spider mites is just take them out back, hose it off with your garden hose, and then the rain will just kind of knock it all off. If you still kind of see a little bit more problem with that, rubbing alcohol on a washcloth will help you also. And then scale. Scale will probably be the hardest one to get rid of. And actually, you may have to take Mother Nature, get her to help you, and get you kind of a nice little 3D butterfly net thing. Uh, stick your plant inside, buy you some ladybugs, and release those in there, and they'll actually attack any of the scale or any other kind of pests that you have. You can get those off eBay, Amazon, I believe. It's not expensive at all. I think it's like 11 or $12, and you get like a 1000 uh, And then when you're done, you can just let the ladybugs go and everybody's happy now as I was saying these are really great trees for beginners if you're just now coming into the citrus world and you don't know a whole lot about it I would suggest definitely getting a dwarf variety and the Calamondon orange is really good they are a little bit more forgiving and they're easier to take care of they're hardier and they're great for bonsai now I know a lot of you know me and that's what I'm kind of into right now but I haven't decided whether or not I wanted to take this guy down that road. Until then, be sure to check back. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything, any uh, problems or concerns that I may not have addressed. Leave me a comment and let me know uh, if you guys had any kind of success or failures with any kind of citrus trees out there. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the button next to it. That way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. Well, until then guys, you all take it easy and have a good one. And don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.